This video is going to go over a little bit more about interpreting file permissions. Uh, we talked about how to set them and, and what they mean uh, in a previous video, but now we're going to talk a little bit more about when you're trying to figure out access issues, what you need to look at. So first thing you need to figure out is which set of permissions apply to the particular user. And the way you can find that out is by using the ID command. If you run the ID command with no arguments, it tells you about your current user ID. So currently I am RBE11111. Uh, I'm in the groups RBE1111 and the users group. If you run the ID command with another user ID, it tells you about that user's groups. So in this case, I can see that RBE0000 is in the RBE0000 group and the will group. So you need to know that so you can look at the uh, file permissions uh, and be knowledgeable about which set of permissions apply to the, that particular user. So if we look at the files, uh, and directories in this directory um, and we're trying to figure out issues about my user ID RB1111 we see that it, it is the owner of this file so the first set of permissions would apply for this file right uh, this this file has users as a user group so this set of permissions would apply the third the middle set and then this file has RBE1111 uh, which has the second set of permissions would apply to that and then for all the other files and directories, they are owned by the root group. Uh, so the third set of permissions is what would apply for my users. So that's how you in, in, interpret uh, which permissions uh, would apply. So for example, uh, right, I could read and write this file because I'm the owner. I could read and write this file because I am the group in the group. In this file here, I could uh, do nothing with because I have no permissions and all these others I could do whatever the permission said for the third set of permissions read read and execute read and execute so in the uh, quiz the exercises quiz I have some questions that say some things like which file is not owned by root and this isn't the directory you'll be uh, completing those exercises on so make sure you're in the right place and not just trying to answer some podcasts but basically it says which file or directory is not owned by root so you look here this is not owned by root so you might be uh, might be tempted to say directory D uh, but I said which file, so that's a directory, so that would be a correct answer. So down here we have a user uh, RBE1111 owns a file named useless, and we know that's a file because it starts with a dash. So uh, so that would be an answer for that one. I, I may have a question that says which file doesn't have any permissions for group. Well, we already established this file doesn't have permissions for group, so the answer to that would be file names. So you look down through there and see, hey, all the other ones have some permissions for group. Uh, I might ask a question, which directory could you create files in? Hopefully you know by now that you need to write permission uh, on a file, uh, on a directory to be able to cre create files in it. So in this case, it would be directory three because uh, none of these files are owned by you and you're not in any of these groups. So directory three has write permission, so you'd be able to, to create files in that directory. Um, so that's just some of the things you need to, to be able to, to figure out based on what group a user's in, who the owner of the file is, and what the permissions say. There are a couple other things I'm going to talk about quickly. The file permissions are uh, basically the first match wins. So in this case, we have read, write for the owner, we have nothing for the group, and we have read for other. So everybody is other, right? So everybody on the system should be able to read this file, right? Well, not really. My, my user is in the users group and the users group doesn't have permissions. So since the user group doesn't have permissions, if I try to, to access that file, I'm gonna get permission denied uh, because I do not have permission to read it. Even though everybody on the system can read it, I cannot read it because my group cannot read it. And that's the way it, that's the way it works. It may not seem like it makes sense to you that, hey, if everybody on the system can read it, why can't the group read it? Well, there may be certain times where you want to limit access to a certain set of users, but you don't care if everybody else can see the file. So. Uh, just be aware that the, the permissions are the most specific permissions that match you. So if you're the owner and the owner cannot cannot do something, uh, but the group can, well, you're the owner, so the owner permissions apply to you. If you're in the group, the group permissions apply to you. And if you are not the owner or the group, then the other permissions apply to you. So uh, that's pretty much all I'm going to go into right now. There's a bunch of other stuff I feel like I want to talk about, but it's probably just too much uh, for us at this point. So maybe maybe later on we'll talk about some of those more advanced things uh, that sometimes lead to confusion. So uh, that's pretty much it.